Hey, what's up everyone? Today I got an exciting video today. We're gonna to be taking a look at the Tamron 17 to 70 2.8. Now, the first thing I wanna mention about this lens is the actual size of it. Now, this is a very small and compact lens, uh, especially for a 2.8 aperture. So, as you already know, Tamron has a 28 to 75, and then they also have a 17 to 28, both the 2.8 apertures. Um, but this one is made exclusively for APS-C size sensors. Um, so this is gonna pair perfect with the Sony A6000 series, or if you're actually shooting with a video camera, like, um, an FS5 Mark II or an FS7 with a super 35 millimeter sensor, this would be a really good option to have as well. So mentioning its size, the first thing that I do wanna jump into is the weight of it. So it is gonna weigh 18.5 ounces. The front diameter of it is going to have a diameter of three inches, and it's only going to be 4.7 inches tall when I'm zoomed down to 17 millimeters. So like I mentioned, it is very small and compact. We are going to get 16 elements in 12 groups. Our minimum focusing distance is going to be seven and a half inches at 17, and then 15.4 inches when we're zoomed all the way out to 70. The lens is going to offer a moisture resistant construction. Now that is going to give us seven seals and gaskets throughout the lens. We're gonna have a seal on the front element as well as a seal on the back element. Now talking about the front element, like our other Tamron lenses, we are going to get the fluorine coating. Um, if you were unsure what fluorine coating is, that's basically to help against scratches, smudges. Uh, it's basically gonna repel anything off that front element, so it's always nice to have it. We are also going to get a nine-bladed diaphragm. Now, that is going to give us a very circular bokeh, so you're gonna get those nice, creamy-looking bokeh balls in the background. This lens also offers a dual MPU. Now, MPU stands for Microprocessing Unit. Um, the first microprocessing unit is going to have a DSP with it, um, and what that stands for is Digital Signal Processing uh, Processor, and what that is is basically going to help with the digital signal. And then our other microprocessing unit is solely for vibration uh, compensation. So that is supposed to give us really good vibration control inside this lens, and it should really help out with smoothing any of those uh, like micro jitters you might have. So this lens is also going to offer a new vibration compensation. Um, so brand new one that Tamron's taken advantage of, it's actually using AI technology inside of it. Now what that's doing, Tamron is saying, is gonna mimic very similar to what a gimbal is going to look like handheld. Um, it's also able to automatically switch from what I read. Now that's, I believe this is, and if I'm wrong in the comments, I'm wrong sometimes guys, so just let me know down in the comments. But basically what I think that's doing is it's going to be able to tell if I'm on a tripod or if I'm handheld or anything of that sort. So it's actually able to detect that in the lens. Now, another great feature that this lens offers, this is going to work with Sony's IBIS. So if you're using like the 6600 or the 6500 paired with this lens, I'm going to get up to five stops of stabilization. If I'm using a 6000, 63, 64, just one without internal IBIS, um, then I'm gonna get up to three stops. This lens is also going to take advantage of the RXD motor. That's a rapid, extra silent stepping drive. Now, if you wanna know exactly what that's doing, there's a ton of stuff going on with that uh, thing, or with that uh, focusing motor, but basically, it's gonna make this super, super silent, and that's gonna be ideal for video shooters or anyone trying to, you know, not trying to hear that focusing motor. So those are all the specs. I know we covered a bunch of them, but we're actually here at South Congress again, and we're gonna do some testing with this, gonna do some stabilization testing with this lens, gonna take some model photos for y'all, and a little bit of video. Uh, some other stuff that I'm not getting here at South Congress, um, I'm gonna actually take this home and shoot this with my FX9. Um, like I said, if you have a super 35 millimeter camera, I think that's gonna be phenomenal to shoot with this as well if you're looking for a lightweight, uh, fast aperture lens. But enough of me talking, let's get right to it.
All right, so we just finished shooting with Taylor with the 17 of 70. So of course, you know, we got to do our final thoughts and talk about what we thought overall about the Tamron lens. Um, I will say starting out that I am a huge fan of Tamron. I love the products that they make. I really, really love the price point. This is only going to be retailing for $7.99 US dollars at the time of this video. Um, that is very, very affordable for an all-in-one 2.8 zoom. Now, like I said, this is going to be for APS-C sized cameras, but if you're using a Super 35 camera or if you're shooting with even like an A7R4 and let's say you have pixels to spare, this would be a perfect lightweight run and gun setup. Um, I love that I had a lot of flexibility at 17 millimeters. Like I said, we we're here at South Congress. It was very, very busy today. We actually found a couple new spots that I was happy with, but there were some situations where I had to zoom out and I was still able to retain that separation between the background and tailor at a 2.8 at 17. And then other spots, I wanted to get some in tight headshots at 70 millimeters and just annihilate the background and it was still very possible. So overall, very, very satisfied with this lens. Thought it was plenty sharp. And I know I mentioned earlier that it does work in conjunction with all the Sony features. Um, that's not trying to say Sony does it better because honestly, I could not tell the difference between this and a native Sony lens. This thing was focusing hitting the focus every single time, tracking Taylor. When she turned her head, it turned to head autofocus. When she turned around, it just jumped right in the eye. So I was really, really impressed with that. But then again, like I said, I've always been impressed with how Tamron can handle Sony's autofocusing system and how they work together. And that RXD motor, um, when Tamron says it's silent, it is silent. Um, I, I think a doctor could put a stethoscope up to it and it'd be really hard to actually be able to hear what's going on inside there. So I was really impressed with how silent that was. And I can see why Tamron is suggesting this for also video users. Another note that I did want to talk about was the stabilization. Um, I didn't see too giant of an improvement when I was walking backwards or tracking someone. Um, that could honestly be user error. Um, I wasn't walking properly, but I did not personally see too big of a difference between this and then Sony, uh, Sony lenses that also offer stabilization. Just one note to make, but I still think it performed just fine. So yeah, I give this one a double thumbs up. I'm very excited for it. I think once these hit the shelves, which is sometime mid-January, um, I think that they are going to be selling like hotcakes. Let me know what you think of this lens. If you're gonna pick one up, uh, remember to share your photos on Instagram, use the hashtag precision camera ATX for a chance to be featured on our posts. Other than that, remember like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on our next video.